Welcome back to Director's Choice. Ratatouille aired in cinemas about 15 years ago, and in that time, a huge amount of fan theories have been created. Theories are a part of the movie watching experience. They give fans a chance to discover hidden clues left by the movie's creators. Today, we'll be analyzing one of the most insane yet incredibly believable theories of all time. This theory focuses on one of the greatest chefs who ever lived, or at least that's who we thought he was. The theory we'll be analyzing today is about none other than Chef Augusto Gusto, a famous chef and restaurant owner. Gusto wasn't alive in the Ratatouille movie, but his reputation lived on. He was always remembered as an incredible chef. But what secrets was he hiding underneath his chef's hat? Stick around to find out. Chef Augusto Gusto. Chef Gusto was a renowned chef and the owner of a five star restaurant. He was Remy's inspiration and one of the reasons the little guy wanted to be a chef in the first place. Unfortunately, Gusto's life ended after food critic Anton Ego gave him a negative review. It was too much for him to handle. The review caused Gusto to lose a star, and because he could not handle the thought of running a four star restaurant, he passed away. But there's a lot more to this story. There are hidden details that tell a completely different story, and that is the story we'll be looking at today. The story focuses on the life of Chef Cousteau and exposes all the secrets he was hiding. The theory suggests that Cousteau wasn't the great chef he made everyone think he was. In reality, he had a rat who helped him cook just like Remy helped Linguini. This theory is supported by a few overlooked details from the movie. We'll be analyzing each of these details and by the end, you will see that Cousteau and Linguini were more alike than anyone realized. A rodent hair. In the movie, Chef Skinner gives his lawyer a sample of Gusto's hair so that he can prove that Linguini is his son. An interesting detail that most people didn't notice is that Skinner never took Linguini's hair. He only took Chef Gusto's hair, and he didn't take the hair sample directly from Gusto. Instead, he took it from his hat, but we never saw Skinner take hair from Linguini. It was implied that he took a DNA sample from Linguini's saliva by bagging a cutlery or glass that he used. This means that the only hair sample that Skinner gave to his lawyer was the one he got from Gusto's hat. After testing the hair, the lawyer tells Skinner that it was actually rodent hair. In other words, it was rat hair. What was rat hair doing in Gusto's hat? The only explanation is that it belongs to a rat who lived in his hat. This proves that a rat helped Gusto to cook his meals just like Remy helps Linguini. As I said earlier, the only hair Skinner gave the lawyer was the hair he got from Gusto's hat. So that means that a rat was living in his hat. Magazine covers. Another detail that proves this theory was shown at the beginning of the movie when Gusto appears on several magazine covers. On one of the covers, his hat is not sitting on his head. Gusto's hat lifts slightly above his head, allowing us to see something unexpected. In that frame, there's a small creature that looks just like a rat. The rat sits on Gusto's head just like how Remy sits on Linguini's head. Everyone always wondered why Linguini did not inherit his father's culinary gift, but the truth is that there were no culinary gifts to inherit. If anything, Linguini is more like his father than any of us realized. They both had rats who helped them in the kitchen because neither of them could cook. Father and son were dependent on these rats for all their culinary activities, and they both got attached to the rats with time. This leads to the next part of this insane theory. The real reason Gusto died. The theory of Gusto and his rat doesn't stop there. It goes on to suggest that a bad review wasn't what actually killed Gusto. He died from a broken heart, just as the movie claimed. But a bad review is not what broke his heart. His heart was broken after his rat friend died. This theory suggests that the death of his secret rat friend was the real reason Gusto passed away. It also sheds light on Gusto's mantra anyone can cook. Maybe this mantra wasn't just for humans. Maybe this was him defending the reality of his situation. He couldn't cook and a rat was helping him to do it when he said, anyone can cook. He really meant anyone at all, even rats. This was a way to defend his actions and defend the fact that a rat was cooking all his meals. The theory of Gusto dying because he lost his rat friend helper becomes even more plausible when you look at the events leading up to Gusto's death. Gusto could not cook, so after his rat died, he knew his restaurant was going to suffer. He couldn't continue without the help of his rat, the real culinary genius behind the success of his restaurant. Gusto knew he could not live up to the reputation that his rat had created for the restaurant. 
and that reality became even more unavoidable when Anton Ego gave his review. There's a good chance that the meal Anton ate was prepared by Gusteau. Amusing title, anyone can cook. What's even more amusing is that Gusteau actually seems to believe it. I, on the other hand, take cooking seriously, and no, I don't think anyone can do it. He tried to do what he had watched his rat friend do for years, but he still failed. At that point, he was forced to accept that he could not continue without his rat directing him in the kitchen. Accepting this broke his heart and led to his death. This theory makes Gusteau's death even more tragic, and it also supports the movie's underlying message that anyone can cook. It shows that Remy wasn't the first rat in the kitchen. And who knows, there might be others like him around the world of Ratatouille. Cousteau's rat theory shows that Remy was not the only animal in Chef Ratatouille. And there could actually be a lot more. Other Ratatouille Theories It's time to look at other theories from the Ratatouille movie. The next theory is even crazier than the last. It does not focus on Linguini and Cousteau. Instead, it focuses on the connection between Remy and Ego. If you're wondering what connection the young rat chef might have with the mean food critic, who indirectly killed his idol, well, you're about to find out. Remy lived with Ego's mom. In the movie, Ego complimented Remy's cooking by saying it reminded him of his mother's cooking. And there's a reason it does. It turns out that the old woman Remy lived with was actually Ego's mother. There are several details in both houses that show that they belong to the same person. If the old woman Remy lived with and Ego's mom are actually the same person, then it will explain a few of the comments made in the movie. Ego's mom lived in the countryside where she used to cook ratatouille for Ego in their home. At the beginning of the movie, Remy is shown living with an old woman whose house looks very similar to Ego's childhood home. They have similar teapots, curtains, stoves, stoves, chairs, table covers, and more. According to this theory, Ego's mother is actually the old woman who Remy lived with. When she grew old, she moved houses and took most of her furniture with her. This allowed Remy to grow up watching Ego's mom cook. And that means that when Ego said Remy's cooking reminded him of his mother's cooking, it was because Remy had been watching Ego's mom cook for a long time. There's a good chance that the similarities between the two houses mean nothing, but the possibility alone makes the movie even more heartwarming than it already was. To think that Remy and Ego grew up watching the same woman cook is a heartwarming thought. That woman shaped them both and inspired their love for culinary arts. That wraps up today's video. Thank you guys so much for watching. What do you think about this Ratatouille theory? Do you think Gusteau had a rat helping him the whole time? Or do you think he was actually a good chef? And what do you think about the old lady theory? Was that woman really Ego's mother? Let us know what you think in the comments section below. Also, take a look at this other recent clip by Director's Choice. And please don't forget to subscribe to our channel and click on the bell icon, so you never miss an episode.